Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings, and welcome to the We Are Change new show where, admittedly, we do come from a biased side. And that biased side is predominantly against the horse dream, prostitute, mainstream media that lies to you every single day, makes the innocent people look guilty and the guilty people look innocent, that will openly lie through their teeth to the benefit of any special interest or highest bidder that either wants to start a war, lie to you, rob you, extort you, using the latest psychological tricks on you, so yes, as a very professional news organization, I think it is very important for you to understand our bias and where we come from. Now, I don't know about you, but it definitely seems like the mainstream media is definitely more mentally challenged than ever, especially the huffing paint, I mean, huffing and post. You pretty much get the same effects after doing both. We all knew they were special for a long time, but today definitely signified it with their investigative piece that took two writers to write about the term globalist which they said that it was an anti-Semitic term that was casually used at the White House three times this week. And of course, not to be outdone, the Daily News followed Huffing Paint and had their own byline saying that President Trump called Gary Cohen a globalist, which, quote, perpetrates dark anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. With, of course, no evidence at all, just total conjecture in their article, and mainly just concentrated on how butthurt they were. Now, of course, the term globalist means a person who advocates the interpretation or planning of economic and foreign policy policy in relation to events and developments throughout the world. Pretty much just means someone practicing operations across national divisions and having more of an emphasis on that rather than national interest at their home country. Of course, all this malarkey hooey is of course coming from today's event where Donald Trump's top economic advisor, Gary Cohen, left the White House in wake of a tariff difference with the US president. And of course, as top economic advisor to Donald Trump, Gary Cohen, who previously was the president of Goldman Sachs, as The Intercept puts it, ultimately gave Goldman Sachs everything it ever wanted from the Trump administration. And from his short tenure at the White House, Gary Cohen was able to work on laws and policy that translated into saving $1 billion a year in tax savings to Goldman Sachs. JP Morgan Chase, $4 billion a year. Wells Fargo, around $2 billion on estimated numbers, leaving many people saying that uh, he definitely accomplished his mission when he was appointed and a part of the Trump White House. And today, during his last meeting, Donald Trump said, quote, he's been terrific. He may be a globalist, but I still like him. He is seriously a globalist. There's no question. And you know, if you think the mainstream media was honest, they would probably bring up what Gary Cohen was able to accomplish for his friends on Wall Street during his tenure at the White House and making that a subject of investigation. But no, 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 no. It's just, it's just Trump calling him a globalist. And that's uh, really dumb because Donald Trump even called himself a globalist and a nationalist at the same time, which uh, directly contradicts each other. Even though he did promise that his presidency would reject globalism and put America first. And I would personally, from my examination, say that that has not happened. I mean, even right now, independents, Republicans, and Democrats are coming together, introducing a law to the U.S. Congress that would finally end the United States' involvement in the war in Yemen. All for the benefit of Saudi Arabia and not American interests. And, you know, creating the worst humanitarian crisis right now in the world world, bringing millions of innocent people on the brink of death. Mainstream media doesn't like to talk about that too, for some reason. And Trump has been very cozy with Saudi Arabia. He also put in Jeff Sessions as an attorney general, a horrible move that's reversing this country back, especially with the criminal justice system. But also in related news, Tulsi Gabbard today said that she is introducing House Resolution 1227 that would end the Federal Marijuana Prohibition Act and find a real solution to the issue in our criminal justice and healthcare system, which will be very difficult to pass in the United States with the prison industrial complex, pharmaceutical industrial complex, and probably other special interests standing in its way from actually passing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, also the tobacco industry, the alcohol industry, a lot of industries don't want to make marijuana legal here. But I definitely don't see Trump changing that anytime soon. And now in other Trump being complicit with the globalist news, we of course found out two days ago that US-backed Syrian rebels 
which by the way, the United States still trains and funds. And also still with Trump's administration has over a thousand US troops on the ground in Syria right now with expanding military operation, which Donald Trump promised he would stop but hasn't. And now these uh, US backed Syrian rebels have decided to stop fighting ISIS and now we're heading to battle against the Turkish government in Afrin. And if you didn't know, there's an actual war between a NATO country, Turkey, and the Syrian government, with the Turkish government invading that country, taking their territory, and fighting a war against the Kurds, which the United States is not happy about since they were officially aligned with the Kurds, and now they're mad at Turkey. And the whole situation is extremely confusing and hard to wrap your head around. So uh, moving forward in more interesting news, especially with the tariffs that everyone has been talking about, just moments ago, Trump has officially announced new tariffs, even though many people were screaming about the fears of a trade war if this would happen. Now, of course, the tariffs, which is an import tax, is set to 25% on steel imports and 10% on aluminum imports to the United States, which Donald Trump insisted are necessary to revive America's steel industry. This, of course, is a very nationalistic policy that has pissed off the European Union, China, a lot of banksters, and allegedly globalist Gary Cohen, which led to his ouster out of the White House. Now, Canada and Mexico are actually exempted indefinitely from these tariffs, which of course allowed their respective currencies to boom on the international market. And even though there has been a lot of fear mongering around this issue, the stock market hasn't really reacted to this news and it sparked a kind of bigger debate which even Elon Musk is participating in, as he tweeted Donald Trump today, saying that China should have equal and fair rules for cars, because China makes American car producers pay a 25% import tax, but a Chinese car coming to the United States only pays 2.5% of a tax. Of course, this is not the first time Donald Trump implemented tariffs, as he also did earlier this year, when he slapped a 30% tax on solar equipment that was shipped to the United States. And of course, a lot of people are supporting Donald Trump's moves, saying that it is very nationalistic, it is in the best interest of the United States. And on the complete other side, you have people saying, no, this is a horrible thing. We should not have more tariffs because the prices of international goods will go up and that money will only go towards the government. And of course, the government will take that money and predominantly spend it on war. So, hearing both of those sides, I'm very curious. Where do you guys stand on this issue? Let me know in the comment section below. Of course, I will read all of your comments within the first hour that this video comes out, which I am genuinely interested where you guys, the audience, stand on this issue. But moving forward in unrelated domestic news, today we are finding out that the New York City Police Department is planning to arrest media mogul predator Harvey Weinstein on sex crime charges. Um, and um, finally, let me just remind you, Harvey Weinstein was able to get away with his abuse and crimes for over 30 years as the mainstream media ignored his victims and protected him, allowing him to continue his crimes. And as police departments just, uh, just simply just dropped the case with even the NYPD that already had five open cases on Harvey Weinstein. And even years ago, an undercover investigation where he was groping and conducting illegal sexual contact on somebody with their sting operation, which they knew all about. But yeah, uh, no charges. And now, only now, according to an anonymous NYPD source, that is going to change soon, and he will be charged. Well, we'll, we'll see, actually. We never know in these situations. Also, in other gross law enforcement screw-up stories, we got information recently from a top FBI official that revealed all the red flags connected to the Florida school shooting were missed, even though they had multiple warnings, with even the shooter commenting publicly that he will do this in a YouTube video which the FBI saw before the school shooting and was notified of this, which they say that they completely missed because the FBI field officer never contacted Google to help get his identity, even though the school shooter's username, which was public to the FBI, was his legal name. His username was Nicholas Cruz. He left a comment under Nicholas Cruz. The FBI saw all the warning signs about Nicholas Cruz, but didn't do anything because they couldn't positively identify his name. And um, how do you respond to that? And it only gets worse. 
as we're also finding out from that Florida shooting, that two SWAT officers who responded and actually ran into the school, unlike other officers who stood outside, are now being punished because they were never called to the scene. Yep, um, this is actually happening. I mean, the Broward County Sheriff Police Department literally set up a perimeter rather than sending in police officers to stop the school shooter. Now, of course, there's a lot of criticism here on the authorities during this very chaotic, dangerous situation, but I think we need more of that, especially with more people trying to entrust them and only them with their personal safety. Maybe I'm wrong, and if you think I'm wrong, engage with me in the comment section below of this video. So yeah, that's where we're gonna leave off on this episode. If you guys found this video useful, helpful, entertaining, please share it with your friends and family members. And uh, oh yeah, don't forget, if you wanna support us, go to wearechange.org forward slash donate, where we have multiple ways where you can be involved in and support real independent media. And also, just friendly reminder, we talked about this yesterday, but Skynet, I mean Google, is actually working one-on-one -on -one with the military industry industrial complex, the U.S. Pentagon, in building artificial intelligence drones that have the potential to spy on every aspect of your life or bomb you to smithereens. While the U.S. mainstream media is bloodthirsty for more war and pretty much promotes criminal warfare through propaganda while dismissing the possibilities of peace. All in the name of special interest, which we don't have to deal with because you guys sponsor us and donate to us and share our videos. And that's why I love you guys. Thank you again so much for watching. Stay tuned for more.